We're another week closer to the start of the Formula 1 season and although it still feels like a while away, we were caught by surprise yesterday when the first livery design of the year was released to the world, that of McLaren's MCL38. As we all know, McLaren had a great year last year and they want to continue that hype train into 2024. It's all under the tagline of whatever it takes, which began as an internal team motto and it's been extended to a core marketing message, a philosophy over there in Woking. The benefit of this early surprise launch from McLaren is of course then that until the other teams launches, most of which have been scheduled in early February, McLaren gets all the coverage benefits of handing in their homework early. But the event yesterday was only a livery showcase without any design elements or real hints as to what may come on the car once it hits the track in Bahrain for the test and eventually in about a month and a half the season opener that we're all eagerly awaiting. So what can we expect from each team's events this year and why do teams bother with this chess game of tyre smoke and wing mirrors and when can we start to draw real conclusions on the competitiveness of the teams across the Formula 1 grid? Well, in theory, the cars should be revealed at the car reveal events, right? The ones coming up in February. But as with basically everything in Formula 1, it's more complicated than it seems and it's all based around sporting strategy and sponsorship economics. I mean, to the cynic, even the things named car reveal events are not truly what they're claiming. They're just livery reveals and there's a layer further than that. They're barely even livery reveals, they're more just showcases of the logos on top of those liveries, logos that have actually swapped around a little between teams over the winter. But I think the same underwhelming feelings that we got from most of last year's car reveals will carry forward over to this year given the lack of major regulation changes. I think to some extent too, this factor also increases teams' incentive to hide any new design elements until the last possible moment. As most designs trend towards a Venturi tunnel, undercut side pod, ultra low to the ground Red Bull style solution, the differentiating factors of the car designs will be extremely marginal, extremely small, so retaining that small advantage by hiding your designs will be key. And most teams will accomplish this by rendering their livery on a far more basic model, something akin to a compressed 480p version of the final 4K file, so we won't get to see the real cars for a while yet. But what you also see are a few examples every year of these red herring elements like Alfa Romeo's serrated floor from last year's car. It was a cool idea, a bold one for sure. They intentionally rendered and sent out a car designer with a part that they never intended to run on track, just to mislead the other teams. Their gambit was based on the logic that by making the other teams waste their time investigating the feasibility of this fake element, there was an opportunity cost to that. With the deadline for the season fast approaching, the other team spent time investigating Alpha's fake floor instead of things that would have reaped tangible on-track gains, but the extent to which it worked is pretty minimal given Alfa Romeo's championship position last year. So what is there to look forward to then in each of the team's events this year? Well, Red Bull, they're famous for their huge marketing stunts and their overarching role as a brand across the extreme sporting world. Their logo is probably the most popular of any over the Dakar rally, which reaches its crescendo this week with Carlos Sainz Sr. and Seb Loeb scrapping it out in the top car class. But for Red Bull, their F1 launch events are maybe better described as infamous, infamous for their lack of livery changes and their minimal fan value, beyond these platitude-filled interviews about how excited they are to go racing with all their new and legacy sponsors. This year, after the most dominant world championship run in the history of Formula 1, it's only likely to be a further extrapolation of that, though we can always hold on to the hope that maybe, just maybe, they'll play into this perception and surprise us all with something new or some kind of retro callback to the old days of the Red Bull style cars. And Mercedes, I guess a little like McLaren, are very optimistic that it'll be a closer fight this year and that they'll be the ones doing the fighting at the front. And again, while the cynic may put this down to nothing beyond boardroom speak and shareholder value service, the last two seasons for Mercedes have been filled with both losing and learning, and they're things that are painful and filled with adversity on the surface, but they can be really, really valuable with the right leadership. And Toto, unlike Gunther, extended his contract as team principal this week, and he was hopeful in his media statement about the team's chances in 2024. We don't know whether the car will be a silver arrow or whether it will fall into the pattern of black carbon and weight stripping that's sweeping through the grid's design offices like a new COVID variant, but whatever the Mercedes car is, there'll be so many fans hoping that the W15 can take the fight to the RB20. Now, Ferrari rather predictably have had rumours emerge of huge power gains and weight savings, reports of quiet confidence that the Scuderia are perfect for fans who live and die by the hope offered in the phrase, the next year is our year, but maybe, just maybe, 
they could be right in 2024. Ferrari was, of course, the only team to beat Red Bull at any point last year, and though Mercedes slimly took the P2 spot in the championship last year, the Ferrari car looked like a better package, and it had a better average qualifying result. Fred Vasseur, in his sophomore year at Maranello, faces the challenge of that difficult second album after Singapore, trying to avoid becoming just a one-hit wonder. But whether the 676 will finally be the one to bring the title back to Italy, back home, for the first time since 2007 is a question that will have the Tifosi ride on the edge of their seats at the season opener. The only thing we can be sure of is that Ferrari will do their launch event right, even if the car revealed won't be the real one. Their focus on classical aesthetics and modern artistic preparation is so uniquely Ferrari that it'll provide a welcome contrast to the memification of modern Formula 1 comms and hopefully with that grace and elegance we'll get some fuel for the Ferrari and the Tifosi hype train. And we've already touched on the optimism at McLaren and shown you their new livery, but behind them in last year's championship were Aston Martin, something that after the first few races would shock pundits and oddsmakers alike. Aston, back in 2022, made headlines for launching a more authentic model of their car in a year that was particularly significant because of the regulation change. They literally made headlines because of the fact that they launched their car at their car launch. I mean, these are the standards that we're dealing with, I guess, but last year in 2023, at the launch, there was this great organic viral moment with this kid in the audience who's asked Stroll who his idol is, and he goes on to say that his own idol is Fernando Alonso, the guy stood right next to Lance while Lance beamed about his idolisation of Michael Schumacher, Alonso's biggest championship rival. But for Aston Martin this year, I think the boldest guess that I'm willing to make is that it'll probably be dark green and the launch event will be aesthetically very well put together by the great photographers and the comms team that they have there, but that's about it. And only two podiums, a 160-point deficit to Aston Martin, and a game of corporate musical chairs behind the scenes at Alpine means that their 2024 car and the team that will have to run it have a very, very big job to do, a very, very steep hill to climb. The car will likely be dawning the same pink and blue theme that they've stuck with for the last few years, with hints towards this kind of camo pattern on the front wing that will undoubtedly be incorporated into their team merch, but I'm not sure that many Alpine fans are throwing checks at them at the moment. Williams head into 2024 with a new logo and new motion design concepts and I think a new expectation throughout the team of higher standards and of better results. And on the topic of design, in a year filled with special helmets and liveries that were so frequent that they basically defeated the point of special liveries in the first place, the Williams were able to stand out as ones with really brilliant design. So hopefully they've let that team get a little bit creative rather than just gone with the common dark blue color and, and this carbon pattern that we're seeing throughout the grid. Now Alpha Tauri or whatever name they end up with, there's been some rumors about that going on at the moment, but for now we'll call them Alpha Tauri. And they've got a fight between their two drivers who are both looking for a promotion into that Sergio Perez seat at Red Bull. They've also got a new team principal, Lawrence McKiss, joining from Ferrari, as well as Alan Permain joining from Alpine after his exit in Belgium last year. And that's a car that we can expect to look really, really similar to that Red Bull, as similar as the regulations will allow. And Stake F1 or Stake F1 team kick Salber or just kick F1 in the countries with stricter gambling promotional laws, whatever name sticks. Joe and Bottas's team are the only ones truly launching anything new this year. Their comm strategy, their new name, and the new informal tone of their socials have played into the trends of the live streaming platform and its younger audience, though just how this fits in with the crypto casino that they're also trying to promote is an interesting circle to square. The expectation is that the colour story will be kind of black and neon green. It's a pairing that both Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton's personal brands have already played with and maybe there's a chance that they'll play the same serrated floor games that we talked about in the intro with their car reveal while over at the Haas team with their new leader Ayo Komatsu I'd have to imagine that that'll probably be the most bare bones of all the launches as their economic challenges or at least their restriction of budget continues on. Of course you've got MoneyGram remaining the title sponsor and only time will really tell if this different approach that Gene Haas wanted, the theory behind the change in management, whether that can truly be the start of a new dawn at Haas that'll push them up the world championship. I'd also have to think that the red, black and white theme that touches on the livery will stay mostly the same and in such an era of change there's got to be very little time that's devoted to tinkering with the livery with trying to get the best look. What's really tricky though is knowing when we can draw real critically analysed confident conclusions on the team's competitiveness. 
If you try it after the launch events, people will say, oh, those aren't even the real cars. You try it after testing, you've got the asterisks of fuel levels and the dark art of timesheet sandbagging. And even after we get the results back from FP2 in Bahrain, from Quali, and even the race, after the pundits plaudits have been prescribed, we'll say, oh, but maybe it's just track specific. You wait until the high speed of Saudi or the twists of Imola or the mid-season upgrades to see that change. You're kind of balancing at every stage the idea that you want to give people just enough to keep them informed, to keep them up to date and knowledgeable about their passion, but not too informed that the results get predictable and they start to tune out. Unfortunately though, an interview that Red Bull development driver and reigning Formula E champion Jake Dennis gave last weekend might tilt that balance slightly as he said he expects a little more than the resumption of the regularly scheduled programming in Formula One, explaining to the mirror that we've got an extremely fast race car again at the Red Bull team. I would expect us to become champions again unless someone like Ferrari or Mercedes somehow manages to find about a second overnight. I think it's going to be quite a dull season in Formula 1 with Max probably dominating. Now, Jake's got his own incentive there. Yes, he works at Red Bull and wants to champion them and he also wants to get people to watch Formula E. But however it turns out, we'll be sure to catch you up on all the details and all the key moments from the launches, the tests and the races once they get started. For now though, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Subscribe here to never miss a video from us at Crash F1 and check out Crash.net for coverage across the two and four wheeled racing worlds.